possibly. But she told us the name of the woman and she said, told us what she was doing. I mean, basically she's letting us know she's doing a good deed and use, doing volunteer work for an organization. And she had asked me if I was interested in helping out with something like that, but then Alvaro, had, Alvaro and I at that time had something that we had to do, and I don't remember what it was, but I never forgot because um, I don't really forget that many com conversations and content of conversations. So I, I knew, and she said it was for a women's shelter. There were only a couple of women's shelters, and only one of those shelters has gift baskets for women. So I found, discovered that this next women's shelter that I was being forced into was one that was being run by a very good friend of Michael Holt, the woman who is basically no better than any other criminal that I've met. So, and then after everything she did, I mean, just lying about me, perjuring herself in court, and ruining my reputation, trying to make me sound psychotic so I couldn't get my son back without Alvaro, then she, I mean, why would she care to defend her reputation about how she wasn't sleeping with him? I mean, she made that her biggest point. Aside from trying to completely defame me, she wanted to call me a liar and say that she hadn't done such a thing, but she had. And this is the woman that does medical work, goes to Brazil every year with the medical team. So she was not only connected to medical people who were in the area that didn't want to be sued by me for medical malpractice, she was also very likely, I think with her Brazil connections and the way she was acting and, and how she acted with Alvaro, I think it's very possible that this Methodist woman, Michael Holt, who said she was messianic Jewish, which is really confusing. Okay, she goes to a Methodist church, but she's insistent on being called messianic Jewish. Most people who want to be messianic Jewish go to a messianic Jewish church. I mean, maybe she did every now and then, but I don't really care what her religion was, except for maybe who connect, how it connects her to other individuals. All I know is that she is a liar, and she was she had no problem lying about me in a way that she knew was going to harm my son in court, and. So then all of a sudden I'm faced with having to apply at this woman's shelter where there's this grown woman who from the very start insulted me and degraded me and treated me like I was about, like I was a kid. And then we, one of the requirements of, I mean she knew who I was right off the bat and she made, made certain that she was doing some favors for Michael Holt by insulting me in, at every opportunity and then she wanted to make me look like there was something wrong with me. So she started lying about me and claimed that I needed to, um, and eventually I was told I had to leave because um, the reason I was told to leave supposedly was because that I did not let them, I broke curfew, I think. They said that I had broken curfew and and yet I hadn't. I had told them when I was going to be back and I had signed this little log thing that you have to sign in and out with. And I did that. And I pointed back at that, but she was wanting to have me, she just looked for an excuse to have me leave anyway. She wanted me to be totally on the streets. And one time upstairs I was not tortured except for one time. There was a Hispanic woman there with a bunch of other women in different bunks and on one specific night I had something happen to my heart and it, I was basically burned um, burned up pretty much where I was but that could have been some kind of remote technology because I don't see how 
um, although this one Hispanic woman was watching me the whole time, like kind of I thought watching for my reaction. And while there were, there were all of a sudden then a bunch of Hispanic people outside playing really loud mu party music and yelling out their windows and everything at the same time this was being done to me, I think that it's it's possibly that somebody some people knew about it, but that it was remote technology that was being used against me there. And so when I say I was degraded, I was basically flat out insulted by them. And I had they one of the requirements was that you attend chapel once a week or something. There was a Bible study. So I showed up to this Bible study and I had this really great purse that I'd purchased in um, in Washington, D.C. I was paid as a waitress, you know, and I decided to buy a new handbag and it was this sort of gold, beige, yellow kind of bag with a diamond pattern. It was all solid one color. It had kind of a diamond stitched pattern and it was leather. And I really loved that bag. It was a, a 300 and something dollar bag that I got on sale for like 70 bucks. And I remember that I had blogged about it at the time about what a great, great, great deal that I had gotten. But that was, I mean, way back then in, in Washington, D.C. Because I really loved this bag. And I still had it with me and then all of my other things were still in Seattle with Shannon Borg and this Canadian person. And I went to this Bible study, and in the Bible study, the, the woman made a point, I, I think it was um, Taria, I think that she decided she was doing a Bible study that day. And she started going off about how foolish some women were who would buy a $300 purse, and she would never buy a $300 purse, and no man likes a woman who would spend their money on a $300 purse, and that her own son would never be caught dead with any kind of, with a woman like that, who so foolishly spends $300 on a purse. She went on and on about this purse, and this was supposed to be a Bible study. I mean, there was no one in that entire woman's shelter that had a $300 purse with them except for me and I was the only one who had blogged about it. And this woman, who was supposedly a good Protestant Christian, she chose to spend her Bible study hour going off about and trying to insult me indirectly by doing this whole parable of the foolish, horrible, stupid woman who purchases a $300 purse and how no man likes that and her son has so much common sense he knows to steer clear from a woman like that. I remember I just bit my tongue, you know, figuratively speaking. I, I sat through that and did not say anything and then I, um, I did write a very sarcastic, I wrote a, a one-liner note of sarcasm and showed it to the person next to me. And that person s s s laughed because it was funny. And um, I just thought, why would someone, it's really in a sense that they were trying to degrade me and make me feel really bad, I guess, or and to insult me. And and I, I did feel that that was uncomfortable because there, she was doing that in front of a bunch of women that I had to stay with. So she was basically making me, she was trying to incite dislike. I mean, I wouldn't say hatred, but in a sense she was trying to incite hatred or, or dislike or suspicion among the women that I was having to stay with and they all knew about me. So if they're getting the notice 
very clearly that the manager of the entire place is going to insult me and, and take an entire Bible study hour to do it. They probably, if anybody didn't like me, they would then feel that, well, you know what, obviously Taria doesn't like her. And maybe I can score some points with Taria if I do something mean to Cameo. Which is actually what they did. And then they started, there were a couple of false complaints. One was that, that I had taken photos of one of the woman's daughters, teen daughters, with her um, in a scanty little tank top like half kind of clothed photo. And what had happened is this teen daughter showed me a picture she had taken of herself for her boyfriend. I hadn't taken the photo of her. And she showed it to me. So I had to explain that to Taria, but she, which she had to accept because I, I did explain that, but she still made it into this, this whole cause for suspicion. And Anything like that, she was just eager to put into some kind of a quote-unquote file about me. So then I had to try to go, I tried to go to their board of directors, and I found out it was a group of different Christian, supposed people, in the area that helped make donations to that shelter. And I tried to go to them, and they wouldn't do anything about it. Basically, I had insulted Hi Michael Holt, you know, who's very, um schizophrenic in the sense that she's such a great Christian on one hand and then her brother happens to own the rowdiest bar in town on the other hand and she works with him so she's party girl and then she's also Methodist Christian who also wants to be a Messianic Jewish woman so who we're all supposed to feel so sorry for because supposedly she thinks or her mom thinks or something rather that she has some form of cancer which you know seems like a pity plea to me I don't I didn't see any evidence whatsoever that she was suffering from anything that looked like it was it caused any kind of pain or suffering to her and and regardless of whether you, you someone is ill or not, I mean, unless it, it's really affecting their behavior for some reason, because um, because of a, a, an ordinate amount of pain, it doesn't excuse personality problems and character flaws, like you know, half like a whole number of things that she possesses. So basically I was only at that other woman's shelter pretty much until the night that there were all these Mexicans playing really loud music around the house and I and I had this burning sensation in my heart again while I was at um, at that shelter. And it wasn't heartburn again, it was the technology thing that had typically only happened when I was sitting straight across from my laptop computer, which caused my laptop computer to run like harder to vibrate more and run harder and it was pretty much right after that that I was told to leave okay so then I had I was told to leave when they already knew I had already checked with the other shelter and there was nothing available they told me that if, if they weren't making an excuse why I wasn't eligible they were making excuses about how nothing was available for two months that kind of a thing so I had already checked with them and been told that there was nothing available. And I was not allowed to go to the YWCA. So then exactly where was I to go? I'm. It wasn't because, I mean, I had not done anything wrong. At the one place, I did find out there was a rule against smoking, but I didn't know about it. I mean, truthfully, I, it was an innocent um, mistake, and because it was so innocent, I figured a one time, you know, there was no sign anywhere, so one time just not knowing, I, I figured they'd have a little more sympathy. And then the other place, though, that Taria was running, 
that one was their 